And, and we are recording. Hi, everybody. This is David P. France, and I'm coming to you from Basel, Switzerland. Before we get started, I want to encourage everyone who is out there watching uh, to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube or BitChute channel, and also share the video with your friends and family. Let them know what we're up to. This is David P. France TV, and we are showcasing, highlighting uh, creators and creative people. And what I consider, I mean, creative people are almost in every industry as far as I'm concerned, but uh, what we're doing is we're focusing on artists, inventors, thought leaders, small business owners, and entrepreneurs, right? So today, <laughs> or tonight, um, I'm talking to a good friend of mine, uh, again, Patrick Barnett, who was out in LA, so it's like a nine hour difference. How you doing, Pat? Pat is a singer and actor, actor, singer. Great How, to see how's you. How's it going? Nice to see you again. It's going all right. It's going all right. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm hanging in there. So I <laughs> appreciate you inviting me to do this a second time. Well, yeah, I, you know, I wanted to, well, I had already planned when we finished the first time. Yeah. I said, well, I'm going to have to ask him again at some point because I, you know, for a variety of reasons, um, you know, uh, the situation that we are currently finding ourselves in, I knew was going to go longer. For yeah. Whatever reason. I just knew it was going to go really yeah. long. And right. um, someone that I know said, after a certain amount of time in um, quarantine or in the situation, he knew yeah. that it would, there, there was going to be um, no going back to where we were, right? So if it was only a couple of weeks, if it had only yep. been a couple of weeks, we would have been fine. Now it's been so long right. since... Uh, things started to go in a certain way that right. now it is forever altered, you know, right. how we are living, right? So, yes, I th and I think we're like all sort of strangely getting used to it, <laughs> you know, as, as depressing as that may sound. You know? Yeah, so how is it affecting you from where you're, you know, where you stand or where you are, and if there are any observations that you can share with the audience about, you know, how things or how people are, coping or dealing with the situation yeah i mean it's uh it's it's been a tough time but you know i'm, I'm really trying to you know focus on music uh you know working on some stuff here at my place and and everything's kind of gone virtual now like we're talking right now on zoom i mean it's uh you know there there's lots of jam sessions there's a lot of like these um, open mics at, at various clubs that you know we you know you meet up on a tuesday or wednesday people actually have zoom rooms where they do, you know, jam sessions, which is cool. So mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I, I've actually participated in a number of those, um, which has been great. And it's been great therapy to, uh, to just sing, you know, um, that's, that's been one, one of my, uh, I think one of the challenges of this time is that, you know, you, we're not only like missing the music, but we're just missing one another, right? Truly. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the nice thing, I guess the, the only thing we can kind of do right now is kind of connect online with friends and um and we've got some of these you know musical um events like virtual events and it's, and it's really cool too because a lot of these bigger artists like uh, i saw michael mcdonald the great michael mcdonald the doobie brothers um <clears throat> a lot of artists are doing like you know um virtual shows you know so um i've been doing uh actually a bunch of uh, about once a month i go to palm springs and I, uh, I go to, uh, I go to this great spot in Palm Springs called, uh, Frankie's, Frankie's old world, old world Italian restaurant. So you, you would, you would love it because it's got great sort of East coast Italian food. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, it's, uh, it's really cool because what they do is they have this organization called, they've set up this charity called, uh, bread for musicians. And, uh, what it is, is that, you know, they, every, every night of the week, they, they feature a different artist and they raise money for sort of local, local musicians, which is great. And so I'm, I'm blessed to, you know, to, to be invited out there. And I go out there once a month and I perform uh, about, about once a month or once every other month. And it's great. I get to do 30 minutes, you know, it's just me and a camera and pian my friend, Paul McDonald, who, uh, produced Darkard Sway. And we get to, you know, we get to play and it's, it's great. And it's virtual. It's all Facebook live, like what we're doing now. And, uh, so that's, it's, so the main thing is just trying to keep busy creatively, um, you know, try to get outside and get some exercise, run or, 
you know, um, just just try to you know not lose your sanity, basically. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 been cool. I've had some opportunities virtually, um, and also I had a great gig um, in December, which was a gift from the universe. It was incredible. Uh, um, we did a a live big band show in San Diego, which was incredible with uh, with with this phenomenal big band, uh, the Dwayne Benjamin Horns, which so like half of the band was like from the Count Basie Orchestra, which was mm, just unbelievable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, and and some three phenomenal like other guys that I work with the singers and the guys that were four of us. It was a Rat Pack show, so that was awesome. That was really cool, and uh, you know work with. Uh, Wonderful, a good book of mine named Matt Forbes, who's a fantastic singer, crooner. A guy named Michael Washington, who's a, a marvelous singer. He's out of Vegas. And then a, um, another great singer named Joshua Cavanaugh. So it was just, it was, it was great. It was really cool because we'd, we'd play and uh, after a song, people couldn't get out of their cars. So after the song, people would like beep. They'd have to, you know. So wait a minute, wait, wait. So, so, so then how, how was the, what was the setup there? In their cars? It was a virtual show, so basically it was it was a uh, a drive-in show. Oh, okay. The people drove their cars into people. Drove their, yeah, they drove their cars, um, you know, into this giant parking lot at Cal State okay. San Marco. and oh. you'd, you'd finish a song, and you'd you know, you you'd finish, and all of a sudden you'd hear beep 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 because people weren't weren't allowed to get out of their cars, so people were beeping for applause. So. That's just indicative of the world we're living in. But it was cool. It was cool to hear people beeping. Well, wait, wait, wait. So let me get the get, let me get a mental picture. Yeah. So you're on stage, sort of like right. at a drive. It's like a drive-in theater kind of situation where there's a stage and you guys are performing on stage, maybe with yeah. the mask or, or something like that. And then everybody's in uh, the car. Well, actually, yeah, we weren't we weren't in masks. I mean, we were on stage, spread out. We were all okay. you know six to eight feet apart. The singers okay. were four of us across the stage and then the band uh -huh. and the horn players that were playing weren't masked but you know the 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 rhythm section the guys in the rhythm section were uh -huh. and uh so anybody who didn't have to blow a horn or sing was masked wow and um yeah so anyway it was just it was it was a it was a great night it was a great night and it was uh it was a great gift i mean it was a great you know a really great gift to have in the middle of a you know a time where no one's no one's performing, and they they, they managed to do it. A uh, California Center for the Performing Arts, which is a really wonderful, one of the bigger performing arts centers in California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they they staged this, and they they figured out a way to safely, you know, bring entertainment to people. You know, which required a lot of creativity, and um, but it was, you know, we it was it was packed we had a great great crowd and it was it was cool i mean it was like we finished the songs and it was beep, 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 beep. you know it was, <laughs> it was it was it was something i'll never forget but anyways it was uh it was awesome so that's yeah. uh those are some of the things i've been doing and uh just trying to stay connected with people basically you know well you you talked about well, two things that come to mind you talked about the count basie orchestra people that were in this orchestra before yeah. um how does how how does that generally work? I mean, is there a a scene in L.A. or at least the West Coast where the musicians yeah. rotate? Are they coming from the East Coast? Or they? I mean, where are the where are these musicians located? Right. Do they have to actually? Well, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the guys. I mean, a lot of the musicians. Um, a lot of the musicians in the band live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. The guys do. I, I'm. I'm. Pr I, I think a few of them came. You know, flew in from out of town for the gig. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. I mean, a lot of the. I, I believe a lot of the guys in in the group. You know, that play with you know the Basie Orchestra and 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 really big acts like that when they're when they're touring. Um, you know, some of those guys flying from other places. But I think I think a good number of the guys from the band live in Los Angeles. Yeah. So. And also, you mentioned. Um, a uh, crooning, right? Or uh, yeah. you describe, you use the descriptive uh, word crooning. Now, what's the difference between someone who's a singer and someone who's a crooner? Um, just for uh, people sure. out there who don't necessarily know the term, if the video, yeah. Um, yeah. this is crooning specific to the American, uh, the American cultural. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. Lineage. And, and, 
a question I get asked a lot. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, so crooning, I mean, you know, crooning refers to uh, the kind of type of singing that like Sinatra, Mel Torme, and Tony Bennett do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, so it's, um, you know, um, it's, it's a good question. And, um, you know, I call myself a crooner because, you know, um, it's, it kind of fits with the music that, that I sing. I mean, I sing you know, standards like jazz. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm, um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, I refer to myself as a singer or a crooner and, but people call me both. So it's, uh, yeah, it typically refers to sort of like, um, <clears throat> sort of jazz, jazz-like singing. Mm-hmm. Sort of kind of uh, singing that's not sort of as demonstrative as sort of like stage singing. Mm-hmm. I, don't yep. if that, I don't know if that helps, but uh, yeah, but it's, um, yeah, I'd have to say, you know, uh, actually, but it's interesting because I remember, um, you know, someone asked Sinatra this about crooning. And I, I don't think I, you know, if my memory serves me correctly, I think he, he kind of broke it down because he was... Uh, he, when somebody said, well, do you, do you consider yourself a crooner? And he said, well, you know, I, I think he referenced Rudy Valley. He goes, you know, Rudy Valley, you know, would be more of a crooner than me, I think, if my memory serves, mm-hmm. serves me correctly mm-hmm. with, uh, with Frank. But in any event, um, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a certain, certain style. I think it conjures up a certain style, a certain vibe, mm-hmm. you know. I think we kind of talked about that in our little pre-interview. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, we have a pre-interview. In, in, in yeah, when I worked on TV, it was generally like I was the one that did the pre interview, right? Yeah. For other people, right? So I don't have yeah. anybody, else, just me here. So I, I do the pre interview and the interview, which sometimes doesn't make any sense because sometimes right. during the pre interview, we have some great stuff that we don't repeat. Wait, is this the interview or is this, I mean, are these the outtakes? This is the interview, right? So I mean, um, but I, I think it's what's interesting is, well, let's put it this way after my first interview with you which was two-parter because we weren't really yeah. I started to listen to more and more artists in that category right so I had already listened to Sarah Vaughn and Frank Sinatra and also Ella Fitzgerald I think there are a couple of videos that are on YouTube yeah. that have Frank with Ella and um what other combinations like I was telling you about Shirley Bessie and um Tom Jones and there's yeah. a certain uh era I would say, what is this, the 60s? Sure. Yep. I don't know if it's late 50s, early 60s, but all definitely through, the 60s, 50s right? Through the 60s, yeah. Yeah. That, it was funny, um, you, Tom, funny you mentioned Tom Jones because I, uh, when I was in college, I, um, I was a stagehand for Tom Jones. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I was, uh, what's that? I said, uh, what's interesting is that he and Shirley Bessie are from the same part of uh, the UK. Yeah, yeah, they're from, from Wales. The same, they're from Wales, right? From Wales, the Welsh. Yeah, so I, I, I did a, uh, I, I, I did, I was a, a stagehand for a Tom Jones concert when I was a junior in college, and it was, it was pretty eye opening because I was, you know, we, we set up the whole band, mm-hmm. you know, loaded in the afternoon, and, uh, um, you know, and I, I wasn't really at the time I wasn't really singing. I mean, I was. I was kind of singing more like rock and roll and stuff. I was sort of, you know, more into rock and, you know, I play, I was play, I play a little piano, a little bit, very, very little, but, you know, pop tunes and things. But, um, but yeah, so we, uh, I got a call from my professor to, um, to, he called me up, my, this professor, Professor Ned Warner at the University of Scranton. Mm-hmm. And he, hey, Patrick, you know, hey, you know, we're doing, a, doing the show down at the Kirby Center. I want to know if you want to come down and uh, do load in and load out. And, um, it's Tom Jones. So anyway, so I went down and we we loaded the uh, the musicians in, and it was it was kind of like my first my first experience with kind of music musicians from Los Angeles. So it was kind of it was uh, it was wild. And, you know, I was we what? set the band, and what was that? The, did the professor know that you have uh, the gift of singing, or did he just call you and say? Hey. I don't- I don't even, how are you getting? I, how do you get all the close to all these people and and the people? Do they know that you have this gift of singing? Well, I, well the thing singing? is, I don't. I don't think he did. You know, I don't <laughs> think he did. I mean, maybe he did. I, I don't know. But but uh-huh. he he needed he needed like they needed bodies to like unload trucks, right? Uh-huh. So 
he needed help. So I guess he was, he was, I think he was in the local union, Mm. um, stagehand union or whatever, but um, down in Pennsylvania there in in Wilkes-Barre. But in any event, he, uh, yeah, so, so it was, it it was, it was pretty far out because I was, you know, I was, you know, around these, you know, guys that were, you know, middle-aged guys that were talking about their families and, you know, all these guys in these, in the orchestra. And it was, it was pretty cool. And, you know, so then later on in the evening, um, he came back for the show and I, I was, I was literally in the wings. I was, you know, I was. So what, what did you see? Or what was the like seeing? Was the side of the stage. What's that? What is it like? I mean, what did you see? What it was the experience like? Cause you, if you're in the wings, you saw him sing. Right. I know. It was so, incredible. Yeah. It was, it was, I was standing there and the music, the, 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 the lights went down mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, the house lights went down the, 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 you know, the, the stage lights went up and, um, and it was, you know, and I was standing at the top of this staircase and I, I saw like two guys at the bottom of the staircase and I saw, you know, one guy with a little light, you know, his little flashlight. And then I saw mm-hmm. Tom Jones tuxedo and he just, you know, came up the steps like right by me and went on the stage and the place went crazy. And it was, it was incredible. I mean, you know, he's probably, I don't know. I mean, he's, you know, he, he was, he was incredible. And it was at the time, I mean, I watched him the whole time and he was jumping around and dancing and mm-hmm. he was doing so much dancing. And he was actually st- at that time in his career, you know, he was starting, I think he had just recorded or started to do some covers of some Prince songs. Like he was doing Kiss. Right. So <laughs> I remember, I remember. He, he was, you know, running around the stage and like just killing it. And I was like watching, you know, I was watching him like, oh my God, this is Tom Jones. It was like incredible. Was so it sold anyway, out? Was it sold out, or, or what oh, was? Sold, it sold out. Yeah, and I remember they were they were we they were they were actually women were coming down and throwing flowers on the stage, and from like throwing <laughs> flowers on the stage, and there was you know they they wheeled some some woman in a wheelchair down, and you know he would kneel down and kiss their hand and say you know thank you love, and so it was there was there was probably like half a dozen bouquets at the, you know, the foot of the stage. And it was something else, man. It was something else. Oh, and it so, was... so, so what did the experience do? I mean, you see, like, this, this is the question I have. So you knew that you could sing at that moment, right? Yeah. You, you, but not everybody knew that you could sing, right? Yeah. You knew that you could sing. So when you're seeing and you're watching him, is there anything that he registers with you with regard to the specific gift that you have, you know, very similarly to a Tom Jones? Well, anyway, just to be mentioned in the same sentence as Tom Jones is very kind of you. And I, I'm, just, I, I, I'm just saying, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I, I appreciate it. I'm just saying, saying, you know, you're saying really, yeah, really yeah, well. No, I mean, um, Shockingly so. Firing. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you know, I don't know. I mean, it was, you know, it was, what, 21 maybe at the time. And, you know, I was I was singing. I was singing in plays and things. I wasn't really singing. Um, um, I hadn't really done a lot of jazz or anything yet, yeah. you know, because I, I would... A couple of years later, when I moved to Los Angeles, is when I kind of started that kind of stuff. But um, I don't know. I just think you know, you know. I remember seeing on TV as a kid, and you know, hearing his music. So um, just to be there, I just thought, man, this guy's, you know, this guy's phenomenal. I mean, just just the just the energy he had, kind of the charisma he had, and his voice was mm-hmm. as that incredible voice. And you know, I just was blown away by how much energy he had and how he just, he was just killing it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, big um, impact. Yeah. Well, you have a lot of stories like this where you are connected to, um, or you've seen people. I, I'll tell you a story of mine, which is, um, which I think you'll find interesting based on what we were talking about before we started the interview, which was, right. I always wanted to work as a, one of the suits Right. I saw myself as an executive, a record, a record executive. <laughs> yeah. So I did everything in order right. to, I worked at MTV as an intern. I worked at um, uh, Virgin Records while I was in law school and not going to class. I worked at Columbia Records and uh, in the promotion, pop promotion department with no money. It took me six weeks to get into the building. Um, right. <laughs> All of these experiences, um, there was one when I was in law school where the, I think he was the vice president of Time Warner, something really, really right. high level. Right. He was a graduate of Tulane University and he came to speak and like you, somebody called me up and said, David, do you want to go pick him up? 
but he needs somebody wow. to pick him up. I didn't even have a car. Okay, I had to call a friend of mine to get her the, the station wagon. It was a it was a mauve, I think it was called mauve colored, really fancy Audi, right? Station wagon. Right. I picked this guy up in a in an Audi station wagon, and this is the first time that I had I had driven downtown New Orleans. So wow. I didn't really know where I was going. Like I picked him up not really knowing how to get back to Tulane, okay? So what happened was I kept circling around the building, right. <laughs> circling around, not knowing how to get out, but he thought I was circling around because I was pumping him for information uh, because of who he was. Right, so, so you, you, you were just lost. I was, <laughs> I was lost. lost. Yeah, I was right. lost, and he was in the car with me and he laughed about it goes oh, oh, oh you know like like he yeah. thought that i genuinely was trying to well, i was pumping him for information but it was only because i was nervous because like i need to figure out a way to get out of here right and also you know how when you first drive somebody else's car you have to get used to it before you really yeah. well that was the first time i'd ever driven her car so i was i was in trouble two times over I pray wow. to god please help me figure out where to get to the exit you know so yeah I've had, i have i've had near miss stories like that that kind of make me think is that something that i really want to do or do you know what i'm saying like i reevaluate the situation based on the happenstance or wow, the okay. coincidence um of meeting someone who i wanted to somehow uh, be it at some point and it's not just somebody who's like a suit, but then sometimes right. I meet someone who is a performer or someone who's right. a news anchor. Sure. And I'm like, ah, mm, I don't know. Mm, you know, it's not always positive, right? It's not always Right, positive. right, right, right. You, sometimes you don't want to meet your heroes. No. Sometimes you don't want to meet your <laughs> no. heroes. Yeah. I've had a few of those. But no, you want to I've keep had, your I've distance. Had good, good stories, but sometimes you meet your heroes and you're like. <sighs> and it goes downhill, right? Yeah, you're like, man, I I wish I kind of kept it, like, <laughs> you know, this bit. Look, but, uh, but no, but I mean, it's 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 beautiful when you meet somebody and you know, and they live up to you know your expectations cool. of what he they would cool. be like as a person. He was cool, but look, this is I, this is what I wanted to tell you that yeah. era, which was like in the '80s, right. um, because remember it well, he was I don't remember the man's name. But he was big time. Like, I think he flew in on a plane, a private jet. Right. He flew in from New York on a private jet. And here I come with this Audi champagne <laughs> station wagon. <laughs> but the, the request was that they wanted a student to come pick him up. So, I mean, it wasn't like. Okay. I was... And it was a nice car. It was a nice car. I mean, okay. I mean it was, it was really nice. Champagne Audi. We had to take the baby seat out of the back. But, I mean, you know what I mean? It was. But I, I, I remember. Like he, I, there was a, I had an angle into yeah. how much this guy was worth. Like they were like, somehow his name was on the annual report. I mean, this is, this is serious business, right? Big time. Yeah, he's big, big time. Big time, right? Yeah. And, and just to pick up the phone, he, he could yeah. pick up the phone and change somebody's, you know, life. Yeah. Yeah. He you had that kind I mean? of. So that, kind of that was one that I remember that I was like, oh my God, I gotta get him to Tulane. It's taken me too long to get out of this exit. Yeah, the I-10. Um, but I've had encounters like that all throughout, right. similar to you, like where, have you experienced someone where you said, ah, like you don't have to tell them me the person's name, but I mean, where you've been like, ah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a few, I've had a few instances with, with, with people, but, you know, I mean, I, I like to um, always think when I have a, an instance like that or an incident like that, you know, that, that you know, people, you know, might be having a bad day, you know, mm -hmm. that somebody might be having a bad day. Somebody, you know, I mean, we all have bad days, right? So I think it's, I think it's important kind of cosmically to extend that to people who in the moment that you meet them, you know, mm -hmm. when you're a huge fan or you're excited and you maybe followed their work for years, they might be in the movie business or, 
you know, the music music field or, you know, what have you. I think it's, you know, I think it's important to keep that in mind that people can have bad days. But yeah, I've, I've had, I've, I've had some, some, um, <laughs> some disappointing experiences, yeah. but I've had some, look, I've had some incredible experiences, um, <clears throat> you know, just in life and meeting great people and people you admire who end up being really cool. So let me ask you a question. We, you went out to LA, you were doing acting mainly first. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to so ask you a question of what was the moment where you knew or where you decided that you were going to make, it wasn't a jump because it was already in you that you said, okay, right. I'm going to sing more. And also the next question is which artist out there right. did you, have you seen or have you looked maybe at their performances or heard their music where you said, this is the person who I think, right. you know, I, I identify, identify might be too strong of a word, but I really get where they're coming from. Right. And this is the person that is really inspiring me to make this jump from, okay, I'm an actor. I'm going only for acting jobs. And then maybe, sure. okay, let me try this. So th that's a two prong, yeah. like, when and then who who were you influenced by? When? Um, well, yeah. So when I moved to I moved to California in ninety one. So when I when I came out here, I wasn't really I didn't really have any designs on music at that time. I um, you know I I always enjoy I was in bands like you know in back in Jersey I was in a band with Greg Sweeney from uh, Seton Hall <clears throat> and a couple of buddies and um, so I was more into kind of rock and roll. So when I moved to LA, I was, you know, I was, um, I left Scranton, the University of Scranton, and I moved to, uh, I was in New York for a short time. And then I, I kind of sensed I, I, I wanted to move West. That's the, um, so I always had that kind of burning desire to be on the West Coast, as, even as a young, young kid, um, or at least to explore it. So, um, yeah, I moved to LA and, you know, I got, I got, you know, I got a job, a job waitering at the Ritz Carlton in Marina Del Rey. And, um, yeah, I kind of hooked up. I was really blessed to hook up, you know, kind of, kind of get hooked into a great group of friends, you know, a lot of young actors and artists. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I think what happened was, I mean, it was, uh, I was working at the Ritz Carlton and I met this woman because, you know, I was a banquet waiter at the Ritz, so mm -hmm. worked so many, so many weddings and corporate events and i heard so many singers and um like so many i mean probably like you know the period of a couple couple of years like i probably heard over 100 singers like performers like wedding bands and jazz combos trios and things and i heard this one singer and i went up to her and i said look um she was singing and i was blown away by her so i went up to her and i said look i said you're phenomenal i said i just have to tell you you're phenomenal and you're the best i've been working here for two years three years and you're the best singer that i've ever heard come through here and she was like oh my god it's the kind of you you know the whole nine so um anyway we ended up becoming friends and uh <clears throat> um she and i give you her name her name is, her name is vicky mcclure and a brilliant singer wonderful great friend we've been friends for years and just a wonderful jazz vocalist so anyway so we, we'd hang out and she'd be doing gigs around LA and um, she um, um, you know she knew we, we'd hang out at a place and she had a piano so she knew I played a little piano and and um, so we would be hanging out and she said well you know you're an actor she said you know and she introduced me to Chet Baker who was a big influence um huge influence and we listened to a lot of chet baker and tony bennett and and you know the great the legendary tony bennett um among other singers and so we'd hang out and i'd go see her gigs and meet all these musicians and then we were hanging out one and she said look she's like you're an actor she said you know you play a little piano and you know we'd i'd we'd just sit around and play some songs and sing <clears throat> and um and then she said, um, she said, look, you know, you, you've you got to learn, you've got to learn a couple of tunes because if you're at a party, you know, if you're, you know, if you're at a party somewhere, um, you know, you want to be, you know, you, you're already a singer. She goes, yeah, you're, you got a voice and, you know, you could already do this. 
you, you you need to learn like three to you know five tunes so that if you're at a party you can get up and entertain so i was like yeah, you, yeah you're right yeah i should do that so um my grandfather at the time you know he was back east and um my grandfather was a great singer he was uh he was uh he used to play the ukulele and he used to be a uh in the in the twenties, I believe it was the twenties, maybe late twenties, he was on the radio in New Jersey and played ukulele and sing, um, ukulele, and sing. Anyway, um, so my my Roy Barnett, my grandfather, so he was he was incredible and he had a great voice and he was a great musician. So he was a big influence on me. <clears throat> but he 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 subsequently passed. So when he passed away, I thought to myself, you know. I thought, you know, because I had met Vicky and I was starting to take a few lessons with her. And I was like, you know, he just passed on. I was like, you know what? I, this is like, and it's not even like a self-angradizing thing. It's like, whoa, I can say this, this 5 million people, 10 million people can sing. That, you know, everybody can sing, I think. But, <laughs> you think? Anyway, anyway, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of great singers in the world. And there's a lot okay. of people, that, you know. Mm -hmm. all over the you know, the world that that can that could sing so but i mean it was one of those things where i thought like if i didn't pursue this uh -huh. if i didn't really kind of carry the torch and kind of pursue this that it was sort of a um, <clears throat> a waste so when he passed away i started to get more serious about it mm -hmm. and i thought you know you got to do this so um that was the when is that the, I guess that's the answer to the one question. It was two, was two problems. Yeah, when when it, when the, yes, light was the early nineties. Yeah, it was a long answer to the when, um, and then <clears throat> and then um, yeah. So then the I, you were talking about an artist. I guess like the an artist. Who you were like, that's it. Artist, right, right. So 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 I think it, that probably probably happened before I moved to Los Angeles. I was living still back in Jersey, and I saw I was watching the American Music Awards. Mm -hmm. And, and I guess Harry Connick was kind of coming up at the time. So yes. I was like, oh, this, guy, this guy's cool. He's got a great voice. So that was, he was a big influence, Harry Connick. Mm -hmm. um, but he was actually performing in the American Music Awards. And let me just get a sip of water here. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and Tony Bennett was performing. Right. So he sang, um, so I was sitting in the living room of, the house in Maplewood, New Jersey, and I saw Tony Bennett come on, and Tony Bennett sang, um, "When do the bells ring for me?" Mm -hmm. And I honestly say that, like, it was one of those eureka moments. It was a moment where I, I was, it was, I was so moved, and it was such a, it was like such a triumphant moment to witness, just mm -hmm. even to be. And I was hearing him sing, and he he sang. You know, you know, it was it's it's a beautiful song by Charles DeForest, um, who was a, a pretty uh, well known songwriter in, in New York City, and um, that that Tony Bennett recorded the song. He was singing it live, and it was just it was one of those moments. It was so moving, and his voice was so incredible. And he hit this high note, and and the place went like you know people jumped out of their seats, and, and it was just. It was so moving and i was like whoa like that's that's so incredible it's just so it just there's no words i mean it was just such a triumphant moment that you know i was witnessing and you know along with the rest of the world and uh, i just thought you know well i mean and i don't even know at that moment that i knew that like oh i'm gonna do that but it was just mm -hmm. it was a moment that i'll never forget that that impacted me you know witnessing another artist and i think <clears throat> And, and then I, I started really, you know, kind of jumping back to, you know, kind of learning tunes uh, and meeting Vicky McClure. But, you know, I, um, yeah, I mean, it was just Tony, I started really studying Tony Bennett and kind of became obsessed with Tony Bennett and Chet Baker. And that's all I listened to for a few years where I just, I wasn't really listening to pop music. I was just listening to jazz and vocalists and Sinatra and Bobby Darren and, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and, Ray Charles and, and just listening to different vocalists and just kind of soaking it up. So, so anyway, I'm not sure if that answers your question, but that, that's a moment that I'll never forget that I remember. Yeah, Tony Bennett. 
Yeah. Lady Gaga yeah, seems to have, also have, to have a, a connection with Tony Bennett. Is it, do you think it's because of her heritage? Um, yeah, she's Italian American. She, she's, I think I heard that she's doing another album with right. him. Yeah. And he, what I think is really cool about him is that there was a time where he was sort of not as much in the public eye and then made a huge comeback. Yeah, and he did. The irony, the irony is I was at Columbia Records around the time where he was doing that. Did that happen, huh? Yeah. Like, look, I was there in the early 90s. So I witnessed Mariah Carey. I was there uh, when the Fugees got huge. Wow. And I, Super and cool. I ran, wow. like, I, 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 um, I met uh, Lauren Hill as a young person in, in South Orange, and she was there. Wow, okay. She and her brother were at the summer camp where a lot of the, the, the gymnastics team from Columbia would teach during the summer. Wow. So she wow. was a student or a young person there. She, sure. Her brother and her friends in her yeah. neighborhood. So I was a teacher for that yeah. summer when she was like five. The next time I saw her was in um, the elevator at uh, Sony Music, and it was just us two, right? Wow. So I, I said to her, you're about to get huge. It's about to get huge, right? And she was like, oh, baby. Like, she called me baby, and I was like, look, look let's cut that. You, it's about to get big. It's about, to, you're, right. you're about to get Yeah, you don't even know how big it's going to get. And the, and the reason why I knew that was because my job was, I was the assistant to the assistant. I don't know if I told you this. So I would watch this guy, this promo guy, yeah. just work the phones. That's all he did. That's all he did all day was like take phone calls. And our job right. was to either let the call in or yeah. call, he would say call back. And there was some special machine, some sort of special yeah. speaker that he would just be able to say call back and then we would hear it, you know. So right. when I first went in for the interview, yeah, he had pictures of all these artists on the wall, and he was sitting down. Right, and he was sitting down when I walked in, and Tony Bennett, like, and the way that the promo guys did it was that whenever an artist would, you know, hit a gold record or a platinum, or whatever, yeah. they would take that picture that with all the like right out of Billboard, right, all the executives flanking on either side of the artist, the artist in the middle, mostly. Sometimes right. you know to the right or left, with holding the the record. Yeah. But, but the uh, the the promo guys would always have like this is me envisioning it as it was years ago, had the suits on, right? So yeah. that was like almost like kind of mob, you know. They they were like they're, they're flanking the artist almost to say hey the, this this artist is ours, you know. Right. He had lots of pictures with like Celine Dion, Tony sure. Bennett, and the, the list goes on. So when I go in there, he stands up, and this guy is about 4'11 in height. And my jaw dropped uh, because I didn't realize that he was that short. Wow. And when he stood up, I, I, I'm telling you, for the first day, I was shocked because this guy was considered one of the best promo guys in the business. Right. And everybody had been talking about him. I'm like, this dude is 4'11. So that's when I knew. I said, David, it's it's not that I said I had a shot because of his height, but I knew at that point, because you know, I was more self-conscious about my own height. I was like, this guy, he's like even shorter than I am. Like, this guy right. is, this guy is right. running it. And he's, you know, he's huge. This guy, this guy was one of like he the only reason why he wasn't above yeah. Donnie Einer and all these other people. Right. Is because he was our age. This is what I'm thinking now. He he was a Gen X guy. Right. All the people that were running the company were in the, were baby boomers. He was wow. the only Gen X, in my opinion. He was the from what I could see, he was the only person our age that right. really had a high high uh, profile um, position. So he was the head. Of, was he head head at A and R? He no. He was the pop promotion. One, I was, I would call, I would say that he was a VP, but he started out in Boston. His name is Charlie Walk. I was about to ask you what was W A L K. Well, Charlie Walk, W A L K. Great name. Everybody knew him. It wasn't until later where he was on that um, that uh, music judge show with uh, judging show with um, P Diddy, and um, he Got had it. there was some controversy 
controversy with him that took him out of the show. But back then, at Sony Music, you had to go up an elevator, and there were two different um, places, like there was like a tower, and you could go from one tower to the next on one of the floors and then a higher floor. So right. we were on the higher floor, and, yeah. and promotion was an entire floor. The pop promotion, an entire floor. And okay. on one side was Donnie Einer, the other side was Charlie. And Charlie's boss was this guy named, um, they would call him, I think his name is Brett uh, Blair, Jerry Blair, right? Yeah. So it was really like, uh, it was, when I say it was all Jerseyed out, it was like Jersey, Connecticut, New York, Whoa. right? And they also had promo guys that were like independent. They, they, sometimes they'd bring the promo guys as independent people and then they would hire them full time. But most of the people seemed to be on contract, right? Yeah. Like they, they, there were certain people that had positions and then other people that were contracted, right? So sometimes right. the promo guys, there was one guy out of Brooklyn, I think was an independent, I think it was Italian American. Um, and their job was to get the records on the radio. That was it. Yeah. And it it took a lot of effort. Right. It seemed to get <laughs> records on the radio. Like the guy, I mean, Charlie was in Boston and that's how he cut his teeth. Like he was right. working in college radio and he was like one of the best. And then somehow eventually got into Columbia. And how I got there was I was working in New Orleans uh, for the, for his, one of his, I worked for a guy that Char Charlie was this guy's boss. Right. So when he jumped over to Columbia records and he was in the distribution center in Atlanta, gotcha. he said, David, the only person you should be going to work for is Charlie. I'm like, really? You know, so right. took me six right. weeks to get in there, but I saw the apparatus and how it worked. Yeah. yeah cool. Right. So I went from driving somebody's car <laughs> Around in circles, or driving someone else's car. Champagne Audi with the baby seat in the back. Yeah, and then I uh, made the jump. Somehow I got into the building. And yeah. then to see Lauren, and she and I are the only ones in the elevator. So there is kind of this sort of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. We kind of talked about this before we started the yeah. interview. It is the universe's way of letting you know that you are on the track. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. It's it's sort of like confirmation that you're you where you should be, uh -huh. and, and, and you, you know you, you're doing what you should be doing. You uh -huh. know? A, uh -huh. Sort of like the, the kind of the universe nodding in a way, you know. Uh, and it, and it comes in a, in different ways, right? So it comes sometimes. I believe it comes when you least expect it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say this also. I'm going to share this with you. Yeah, please. I can. For me, I get excited when I know a person is about to break into the scene or into their, into the, whatever it is the universe or God has given them the opportunity to do. They just have to go see it. So when I saw Lauren, I knew when she was five or six because she was rapping then. Right. Yep. Like her brother said, hey, you know, do the rap. And she did a rap like during lunchtime, I think. So of course, my my younger sister and I, my younger sister was always um, also a participant in the camp. We never forgot that experience. So when the album, when she started to move, right, and or, or when I saw her in the elevator, and I knew because Charlie was putting on the Fugees, they were rotating that song, like over and over and over and over again. They were right. calling all the oh, great. Yeah. I knew what was being played, so I was like, "Hey, you're about to, it's about to go for you." So I get excited when I see it. It doesn't have to be a singer. It can also be an actor. It could be yeah. it, anybody yeah. that is moving in a certain direction. And I can yeah. feel almost, not almost, I can feel when they're about to. That is what happened with her. It's, yeah, it's, believe a, gift. Me. it's a gift. So, so the thing is, yeah. what I've had to do is protect that gift yeah. Right. And sort of keep it to myself right. for a long time. It's not, it's not only until now where I'm talking to you and we're doing yeah. these interviews and there's the COVID and all this other, these restrictions where right. I feel, okay, now I can share what it is I know. 
you know how to do great it. man and listen i i love the interviews man so i i love that you started this series and uh i've i've watched a few and uh it's really great yeah so I, th thanks for having me on i mean it's it's inspiring to hear the stories of other people you know you've had some really cool guests look look i mean and here are the journeys i mean you know you're talking about you know lauren hill and your journey you know uh -huh. the record business from picking this, you know, mogul up <laughs> to making into the office and then reconnecting with her. Uh -huh. So um, it's inspiring, you know, and it's, it's, you know, like some of the other guests you've had. I mean, it's just really cool to hear, you know, people's journeys, Look, you know, the along last, the way and, and how they're with this time. Well, well, with you, the, this is the thing. I mean, when you think about it, I have, I haven't, I, I had not seen you for years. I didn't even know no, what I, you I, looked like. I don't even remember what you looked like as a kid. I just, I'm like, oh, that's him now, right? Like, I can't even, there's no it's visual not, picture. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not a I just bad remember thing. you stopping me, you and somebody else stopping me in the hallway. And you, you said something to me. And I, I don't know who it was with, that was with you at the time. But it was like you guys were sizing me up because I was the new guy in, in school. Like, it was, it was a total culture shock from Baltimore to the South. Right. Totally. You're taking me right back. You're taking totally. me right back to the hallways of SOJH. Yeah, it was like the hallway. There's a long hallway where the gym was on the right. If you're going in from the back right, and right. you you make that right and you go all the way. Like that was where I would always see you, you know, across like like going from one class to the next. Right, right. Um, but it, it what's also interesting, let's say, um, and I'll bring this up. One of my friends after after seeing the last interview I did with uh, the supermodel Kara Young, she texts me and she says, you know, you really should be interviewing people from South Orange Maplewood. I said, well, I have. I've already started, right? But what she was saying is that the community, South Orange Maplewood, was very unique, uh, of unique situation, right? Like the people that came right. out of that neighborhood. Um, yeah. And I said, well, well, yeah, I mean, clearly we are. And I said, you know, you need to come on and we start the whole series on like, we can talk about anything, right? It doesn't mean that we have to only talk about a person's career or an, uh, another person told me, well, I'm, I'll come on, but I have some legal issues that I have to resolve before I go on and talk. And I'm like, you can come on. You don't have to resolve any issue with regard to a play. We just don't talk about the play. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It's not about, you know, it has to be that you're doing something specific that is in right. a career, you know, focus, right? It can right. be anything, right? And that's sure. the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, from your experience, right. the people that came out of South Orange Maplewood, at least the ones we know, yeah, it's a very special group of people. It is. It is. I always tell people that people ask me where I grew up and, you know, um, where I'm from and, um, and ask me about, you know, ask, you know, when, when like they might ask me about how I got into the business and, and, and I, I just talk about, you know, how many kids that we knew. I mean, how many, we, we were talking about this before, you know, we, we, we came on the air, but um, how many kids we knew that, that were so gifted and kind of how unique that area was to kind of, kind of nurturing those gifts and also, you know, just the, just the, 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 the pool of, of, of creativity and talent in that area, you know, that we were, we were privileged to have been raised in that area. And so many people, so many creative types came, came out of that area. I mean, you know, we could, we could probably talk for hours about it. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, and you didn't, you weren't in, um, you didn't, we went to different high schools, but Columbia High School was known for its arts program, also its sports program, but um, the day I was in the dance program, that dance program really prepared me for, um, like there was a dance startup group in, in college I literally was prepared to go in. I didn't, well, I guess I did audition. I auditioned and they didn't pick me because they were, I, I auditioned as a, as a dancer first. They had choreographers. One of them dropped out. I already had a piece that I had uh, choreographed in my head. Right. And actually sat on a group of people in Philadelphia before we started school. So I took that piece, 
showed it to them. And they're like, okay, yeah, we'll use it. That right. piece ended up being a big piece. And then um, when the, the school newspaper came, they took pictures of everybody right. and the pictures that made the news or the, the paper right. were me and somebody else. Right. So it's, you know, although I, all those little moments, sometimes I was like, you know, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. That does, It really, all of the moments count. All, well, every single moment. They do. Every, everything counts. You, everything you, know, you never counts. got to square one. Every, even bad experiences are things that we experience in life that I think. I mean, mm. my humble. All experience, every experience is, is a positive experience. You know, mm. you know, there's no such thing as bad experience, you know I mean? And we were talking about that before, before the show. And um, let me ask you another question. Um, what are some of the songs or projects that you would you that you would like to see uh, in the future for yourself? Right, like I mean, when you're sitting down and you're now in LA in your apartment, have you at least thought, okay, well, I'd like to try this, or I'd like to do this, or I'd like to move in this direction? What what has crossed your mind? I think I'd like to write. I mean, you know, I. I wrote my 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 first original song on this latest album, Sway. Mm -hmm. I think I mentioned it in our last interview called ACL Blues because when we were recording the album, I uh, I I had a mishap playing you know play basketball and uh, I tore my knee up pretty badly playing basketball. Mm -hmm. So I wrote this song called ACL Blues. It's you know a nod to the anterior cruciate ligament. So I. Um, I, I wrote this tune with Paul McDonald, who produced the album. So I think I'd like to, you know, I think I'd like to play more piano because um, I need to kind of get back to that. I'd like to play more piano and write kind of more of my own stuff. But uh, because uh, I've been kind of sketching out some ideas for some songs and kind of noodling on the piano. So I think I'd like to kind of try my hand at writing more music uh, for one. Uh, but yeah, you know... And kind of expand the the type of music that I sing because I sing you know I sing standards you know we talked about this at the beginning I sing you know jazz standards you know big band you know that kind of stuff but but on the album we kind of put I have an interest in a lot of different types of music you know like pop and mm -hmm. R&B we talked earlier in the you know before the show we we're talking about bands like you know Curiosity Killed the Cat and Swing Out Sister great mm -hmm. great pop bands kind of pop bands, English pop bands of the 80s. So, I mean, I I think I'd like to, you know, sing, sing, you know, not just jazz, kind of maybe branch out a little bit and kind of expand expand my musical horizons. I know? see, I see. Well, there's, um, right before we started the interview, yeah. I was listening to, I think her name is pronounced Bebel Gilbert, Gilberto, the Brazilian yeah, yeah. singer. Right. Bebel, yeah. Bebel, Bebel. Uh, anyway, um, they did a concert outside on Copacabana Beach. Wow. Uh, Have you been to Copacabana, Copacabana No, 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 no. I, it, like, look, 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 it's funny. Because after I saw that video, I was, the way, there, there are a couple of places that I want to visit. And I wrote them down probably, I think, a couple of days ago. I want to go to Nigeria. I want to go to Portugal again. I want to go to Brazil. Uh, well, Spain is also on the list, and there are different reasons why I want to to do sure. that. Part of it has to do with music. Hmm. Um, each of those areas are doing great things in music that I think that I need to somehow be there and experience so that I can build myself as a as a performing artist. Um, sure. And that's why I stumbled onto uh, Bedel. And uh, this concert on the beach, the way it was filmed, the songs that they picked, the musicians, right. the setup. I said, you know what? This, this, they, they, they got it here. Like that, this is an amazing thing. Like what, what for me, what, as a, someone who's a marketing exec, I'm thinking, how come I didn't know about this early? Like I should have already been hearing about this. It should have, yeah, right. it should have been, yeah. you, you understand what I mean? Like, I should have right. known about this. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course I didn't, and I, fantastic, fantastic how, and she sings, my point was, would, what I want to share with you is that she sings a Duran Duran song, um, Rio, right, but she sings it in her Great style, 
right? She sings it in her style. So it's 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 very like bossa nova ish. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really cool. I'll check it out. The pace, the pace yeah. is slow. So you gotta check that out. It's, yeah, it's, I love when people do great interpretations. I mean, I also told you I've been uh, listening to Shirley Bassey. Now, I don't like all of her uh, interpretations of other people's songs. Sometimes, like she does a Beatles song. She does. She she's someone that does covers or did covers like right right out of the gate, right? So the sure. artist would drop it and then within a short period of time, it seems like in her career, she would cover the song. Yeah. Generally, I don't like her covers, but there are some that she does really well and they translate into her yeah. style, right? Yeah. But I think That's it's exciting. Cool. I think it's exciting. Yeah. This is the kind of thing, you know, to see someone take a style um, in Inspired by one thing and then turn it into something. Yeah, that's great. It's great. I, I love when artists do that. I mean, I, you know, Cassandra Wilson. Yeah, is, is amazing, amazing vocalist. I've, I've seen her a couple times at the Hollywood Bowl, and I mean, I love what she does um, with you know song. How she kind of creates. She makes it her own. You know, she kind yeah, of yeah, uh, yeah. takes a song like a standard. You know be a song by the police or a pop tune and just just transforms it you know yeah, it's cool yeah yeah this is this is um there is another artist so so i listened to that and then there's maybe one other person one other artist uh that i started to, well there's um this song that there's a video out you should check this one out too just because i like the way they did the video which is the Dion Warwick's uh, Walk On By, but I think they did this or filmed it. Right. It was like a, one of the original music videos. So they they did this in Paris, I think, right? So okay. they got all these guys sitting in, in chairs and stuff in suits, and she's literally walking, you know, through the, the cafe oh, or whatever. Yeah. Sounds like but the great. way it's done is so, oh my God, I'm like, can somebody do something like that now? I mean, like, it's not just, it was an era, and we talked about this before, it was an era, there was certain people doing certain things visually, and it yeah. just sort of captured the mood of the song, right? So I think yeah. that is what I love to see, like the same thing with this uh, Gilberto, Bebel Gilberto video, the, the whole set where the beach, the songs, what she's wearing, the backup musicians, like it's a full production. Yeah. And it's amazing. And it translates, it brings the song to another level. Whereas the, 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 and that's what videos do, right? You're trying to bring that song and expand it for more people to see. Right. 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 Make so it that's accessible. Make it accessible. Right. So that's sort of part of what I had been trying to do, at least in music for a long time. I mean, I think uh, <laughs> when I was roaming the halls of Sony trying to, you know, like somebody give me a gig. Like, they were not really interested in me. <laughs> they were not really interested. They really were not. I mean, they were not, they had no idea. They had no you left, idea. You left your mark, man. Uh, well, you know, I did the best I could. You know, that's all I say. I did the best that I could. I was up right. against a huge uh, machine, right? Right, right. I'm like, there are people that have been there years and they're still on contract, right? There, there, there was a yeah. whole pecking order. Sure. Right? And I was the assistant to the assistant. So you already know where I was, like halfway out of the door. Yeah. Right? So I just said, well, look, like yourself, it's like, well, I'm just blessed to see what's going on here. Let me just, <laughs> let me just, let me just be quiet. Listen, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> like you know when you you know like the first thing i ever did i just think the i'll have i'll i'll tell you a funny story the first thing i ever did was i was an extra on one life to live oh geez in new york city and i'll never forget i think i i was supposed to walk by the principals in this one scene this is like uh -huh. 1990 before i moved to la and i think i i think i literally walked into the camera <laughs> but never cool. you, you, you saw you you were there right you were there like you can say no, no I, I was no, I was, I was I there was, I was definitely there but I'll never forget I think <laughs> I mean, it was a church scene it was like mm -hmm. it was like Max's funeral or something I didn't 
I you know didn't watch his show, but I think it was like Max's memorial service. Yeah, that's what it was. And and I was having to walk into this church or something, and I think I I bumped into somebody and I hit the camera and and I remember just thinking like, oh my god, like they're gonna they're gonna fire me. I was so embarrassed. They're gonna fire me, and they're also gonna banish me forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, anyway, it was it's not something I want to do, but something I'll never forget. But I was happy to be there. I was yeah, of course. I was definitely happy to be there, but anyway. you had a front row seat. You were had a front row seat, and you're actually in it as well, right? So I mean, that's even even though I did ruin the shot, but uh, you know uh -huh. that happens sometimes. Sometimes well, at least, hopefully I mean, people are they, hopefully they, they, people are forgiving, and uh, you know the the AD, the director on the day was 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 okay. They didn't yell at you like in front of everybody like a Tom Cruise uh, kind of thing. <laughs> We stopped the whole production to yell at somebody. <laughs> yeah, that was great. You've, had that, you've great. had that. You've had that. that was, right? What's that? You've had experience like that, though. I'm sure. Um, you were. You witnessed it. You had to have witnessed it in your years. Where? Where something? Um. Yeah, I mean, I've had. Yeah, I mean, there've been some. I've seen. I've been on some. You've been around on in some situations where. <laughs> people where people got upset you know like uh -huh. you know who's got upset um uh -huh. um yeah i mean uh, yeah i've been on some i've been on, i've been around some people that you know i mean it, i'm you know i'm sure i'm sure you've 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 seen your share of uh <laughs> of situations i'm laughing because i'm reliving it as i'm you're, telling you story right, after right. story starting to you know i think um uh -huh. <laughs> where's like 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 a real yeah, no, I, I yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reliving a few of them in my head right now too. I just, uh -huh. um, and I really don't know which one to talk about. I won't, no, anyway, you don't have to. Anyway, I'm not going to put the pressure on no, you. Generally, yeah, I've experienced, I've experienced that, and it's, yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah, things can get intense, you know, right? Hmm. Is there anything else that we, we, we wanted to, we, we had the pre-interviews? What else did we want to cover? I think we covered almost everything. Um, is there any anything that you have coming up um, that we should uh, know about? Yeah, I think a couple of things. I mean, a couple of you know virtual things. I got a show in Frankie's back room um, on March fifth. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's out there who's watching this, who's who likes standards and Sinatra stuff, so we do our show uh, Frankie's um, back room in, in Palm Springs. So I'll be there with the great Paul McDonald, who's my buddy who produced the record, and we'll be there March fifth. 5 p.m. Pacific time. We'll do about 30 minutes. Do five tunes, about 30, 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll be on March 10th. I'm going to be, uh, Paul and I will be doing, uh, there's this uh, great showcase that De this woman named Deborah Graff here in Los Angeles does. Uh, she's she's marvelous. And she does, she has sort of uh, these showcase uh, jam nights, jazz jam nights. Mm -hmm. So we're doing a couple of tunes on March 10th. So those are a couple of things coming up. And uh, just, you know, staying positive and trying to stay in shape and <laughs> trying to keep, you know, trying to uh, work on some stuff, you know, and uh, work on the music. That's mainly yeah. what I've been uh, uh -huh. trying well, to think hopefully, of. Well, hopefully the next time, well, hopefully when everything clears up, we, we're, we're, we're really in living through some dark times um, at the moment, but once everything gets managed or situated, I hope to be uh in the u.s where we can meet face to face yeah listen i love it i, I love it like yours right let's do, a, let's do let's do round three and we'll do you know we'll do it in the studio and uh <laughs> you know kind of get back to get back to what we're used to right yeah, but uh, in the meantime it's great and listen thanks for having me on great no nah, look look it's it's always great to have people on like yourself have you on and, and to really uh Appreciate connect and i it. think you know, we're living in times, and I, and I stress this to people, this is the time where you get to do, double down on all of the things that you said you wanted to do in life. This is my approach. You know, because everybody's at home. So really, you know, um, now's the time. Like before, you could always say, oh, I don't want, you know, I have to do this. Or, you know, there's always, you know, people are always, you know, you're always busy, right? You're always consumed. Now people are at home, period, right? They're at home. And also, let's say, when you go to the airport, it's not like there's a ton of people. 
there either. Like people really are living a certain way and a lot of it has to do with fear. Um, and to break out from the crowd of, of, of people that are in fear, I mean, it's a huge deal. And why not? Now is the time to challenge yourself. And I'm speaking to everybody and, and myself included. This is, this is now the time. There's no, other, there's no other moment. This is the moment. Yeah. No, this is, yeah, this is, you know, there's a lot of time to do stuff you always wanted to do. Uh-huh. And they you know, don't, they won't, they, people won't hold it against you because it's a pandemic. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like if we were working, you know, nine to five years, like, well, I can't tell people this. Or blah, blah, blah. Like you, you kind of like have to keep it hidden or whatever. Now people are just like so out of it. People are so out of it. They don't know what to do with themselves. So it's a really good time to strike. <laughs> it's a really good time to strike. That's right. right. The people are petrified. They're not moving. They're not moving. They're waiting. A lot of, time, a lot of alone time, a lot of time to work in a hobby or a craft or whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is. So anyway. Yeah. I'll let you go with that. Thank you so much for. Hey, man. Thanks so much. Available. Great to see you, David. And, uh, you know, I will post a video as soon as I can. You know, we'll figure out downloads. Yeah, yeah, listen, cetera, whatever, cetera. whatever. And, uh, and listen, a shout out to all the other great guests you have. Really enjoying the, uh, the, the conversations and the interviews. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right. Great you take care of yourself. Take care, man. And we'll, we'll talk soon. Look forward to it. All right, take care, uh, man. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.